Hey, what's going on guys? It's Hanson. So we're back with a brand new video and I'm going to show you guys how to set up different routes in your application. So first of all, this is the concept called routing and it basically allows you to visit different locations in your application. So if you've ever went on google.com and typed in a slash after and typed something like Gmail or maps, it would have directed you to the respective applications. So if you were to go to google.com slash Gmail, it would take you to the Gmail app. If you were to go to google.com slash maps, it would take you to the Google maps app. And etc. If we're talking on the server side though, again, each route can represent different resources. So for example, let's say in my express app over here, I can handle a route for users. Let's say if we're trying to make a get request to the slash users route. Well, first off, we're going to call app.get. So this is the route method. So we're expecting a get request from users. And we're going to take in two parameters, request and response. For this callback function, remember this is the request handler function and we're going to reference res and we'll just send back a user. Well, actually, let me go ahead and create an array. I'm going to give it a name of Anson age 22. And we're going to just send back our users array. And I'm going to use an application called Postman. You can go to postman.com and download it. It's very awesome. It allows you to make HTTP requests and a whole bunch of different requests. Okay, so we're going to type in localhost port 3000. And you can see that if we go to the main route, it's going to give us this data back, the status of 200, the time it took, and the size. We're going to go to users now. And notice how we have our JSON array. We have status of 200, time, and then size. So that's pretty cool. And of course, I can also put more data inside our, our array. We can pretend like this is some kind of database. And so let's just give that an age of 21. And let's give another record. And let's go ahead and save. So I'm actually using an application called Nodemon. You can install it by just typing npm i g nodemon. But basically, it's going to do the same thing as Node, but it'll restart your app every single time you make a change. So it makes it a lot faster for development. So I'm going to go and click Send. And now we have all of our records. So this is a simple get request to slash users. Okay, remember, whenever you're making a get request, you are asking for resources. Okay, you're basically just asking for it. You're not doing anything more than just that. Okay, so this slash users over here is the route path and we can have different routes too. So let's just say, for example, if I wanted to get a list of posts, we can also do the same thing. And you're going to start realizing that this whole pattern of app dot the route method and then the first parameter is going to be the endpoint name and then the second parameter is going to be the handler function. Okay, you'll get used to this pattern, so just keep practicing it. But let's just create a new array called posts, and we'll just say title my favorite foods. Okay, one thing that I should also say is that it's good practice to always send back a status code. By default, it is going to send back a status code, but sometimes you want to get into the habit of sending your own status codes. So you can see earlier that whenever we made the request, it gave back a status code of 200. It does it by default, but you can also explicitly state what status code you want to send back. So whenever you make a get request to any endpoint, if it's successful, it should send back a 200 status code. If let's say, for example, the endpoint was not found, it should send back 404. Let's say if the endpoint you're not authorized to visit that endpoint, it's going to send back a 403, which is a forbidden status code. So we'll use a bunch of different status codes later on. But let's go ahead and call this posts endpoint now. And there you go, my favorite foods. That simple, that's our posts route. And we can have a whole bunch of routes too. We can also start creating more complex routes. So let's say for example, we can handle a route, something like app.get slash users. And then we can actually add a route parameter is what this is called. So let's say, for example, you want to retrieve a user based on their name. So over here, I can say, hey, look, I'm going to define a route parameter by typing in colon and the name of the route parameter. OK, so I'm going to pass in my callback function. And before I even do anything else, let me log the request object and the request object, like I said, in the last video has a bunch of different properties that relate to the request object itself. One of the properties is called params and that itself is a request parameter. And basically request parameters allow us to create an API where we can basically set up one endpoint and then that last 
parameter over here can be any value. It can be dynamic. Okay, these endpoint names are never going to change through our application, but this route parameter, the value of it can be different every single time. So let me go ahead and open up Postman. So if I send, you're gonna see nothing is being sent back just yet. But look over here, we have an object and you can see that's our query parameter name. I can change this to anything I want. I can call it username. Okay, and if I were to send a quest, you can see that the query parameter is username. So basically, let's say if we have a bunch of different users, instead of defining individual routes for each user, we can define a route parameter that is going to be dynamic and we can use that route parameter as data to retrieve a specific user from our database. So what we're gonna do is for this route parameter, let me change it back to name. We're going to return the user based on the name. And so what we're going to do essentially is we're just going to say, hey, look, we're going to search our quote unquote database or our array in this case, and we're going to find a record based on the name. So first we're going to get the name from rec.params. So this is called object destructuring. And so we're basically pulling out the name property from rec.params object. And I'm going to go ahead and do const user is equal to users.find. And we're going to find a user based on the use the name. So this is just a callback function. So this is going to return the first record that matches this callback function. And we could automatically just send this result back, but instead what we'll do is we'll do a check to see if the user was found. And if it was found, then we'll send back a 200 status and we'll send back the user record itself. However, if it was not found, I don't even need these curly braces then we will send back a 404 not found so let's go ahead and do that you can see this is not found and do we actually have a record no we don't and the reason why is because well we do but the uh it's uh an uppercase anson so we can obviously ignore casing but if i change this to capital you can see that it's found okay if i go ahead and do kelvin you can see that it's returning Kelvin. So each time that we make this request, the route parameter can be different. So in this case, if we were to do max, for example, you can see this is not found and the status code is 404. And if we were to, let's just say, type in Michelle, that should just give us a 200. And that's pretty simple. So that's a basic example of route parameters. We can also send a query string, which is pretty cool. It's actually very useful in, in some cases. But let's just say, for example, for this posts route, let's say we want to find some kind of post based on the title. So let's go ahead and create another post. I'll just say title will be my favorite games. And we're going to do the same thing. This request object has a property called query and we can just destructure the name of the query parameter that we're expecting so in this case the query parameter is going to be title and we'll do this if the query parameter is present so if they are actually a uh, specified query parameter then we will modify the response so if title exists then what we'll do is we'll want to search the posts route and then we want to find the post based on the title so find post where post.title is equal to title and then we can do if post res.status 200 send whoops dot send post else res.status 404 send not found so let's see what this request is going to look like i'm going to log rec.query just so you guys can see what the object looks like so if you want to use query parameters you type in a question mark you've probably seen something like this before but this is called a query string and basically it specifies name value pairs so you can see right over here that query parameters over here it's actually going to get displayed over here in just a sec but for title so that's the query parameter title and that's going to have a value of let's see what's the title of our uh, post or yeah it's my favorite foods so my favorite foods if i click send you're going to see that it was found if i actually were to paste this into the browser you can see right over here that if i were to make this request to the browser you can see that there's actually these percentages 20 cents in between each uh, word. Basically, that's encoding the URL okay? because you can't really have spaces by default. So it replaces the space with percent 20. And you can read all about it by just Googling a URL encoding. So if I were to just give this like a random title that 
you know, let's say this post didn't exist, it would send four for not found. And yeah, that's pretty much it for this whole video on routing. In the next video, I'm going to show you guys how to handle post requests. So whenever you want to create resources, I just want to do a quick video showing you guys how routing works, how route parameters work, and how query parameters work. So hopefully this video made sense, and I'll see you guys in my next one. Peace.